Hey guys, I want to introduce to you the new API functionality in Jumpstart Pro. So whenever you create a new Jumpstart Pro app, you will have the API token functionality and an example API set up for you out of the box. So users now have an API section in their profile. They can go and create API tokens and you just need to give them a name and this is gonna help separate uh, your various different tokens so you can keep track of which one is which. So inside of here, you'll be able to see the token and when it was last used and created and an example of the authorization header you would need to pass in. So if we copy this, we can go test this URL out and see how it works. We're gonna use Postman for this. And this simply says, uh, you know, helps us make requests if you're not familiar with it. So we will go to API slash V1 slash me. And by default, all of your API requests will be formatted as JSON. Now, if you don't pass in the authorization header, you're going to get a 401 unauthorized status here. That is because your API token is not uh, sent over or not correct. We can't find it in the database to authorize your request. So then you can go through and set up your bearer token and we'll paste this in here if we want to actually authenticate without an error. And here you'll see that we got a status 200 okay and we receive the JSON details about the current user. So slash me will give you that information back. And we also have a version in the API uh, routing so that you can make updates to your API if you need to in the future and release a new version that isn't necessarily compatible with version one. Um, so if you need to make breaking changes, you can do that pretty easily and keep separate controllers and all of that good stuff ready to go. So. If you aren't familiar with it, the uh, authorization header looks like this. It's called authorization. And then you usually have bearer or token or uh, something like that as the first word and then a space and then your actual token. Um, and we just care about the last part so you can say bearer or whatever word in front and we'll ignore that part and just grab the token out of it for you. So the way that this works is let's go to our routes very first and we'll take a look at the API route section here. We have a namespace for the API, format is JSON by default. We have the version one namespace, so if you wanted to add another version, you'd create a new namespace right here and add version two, and then that would set up controllers in the version two folder. So then we have, for example, I have this projects route uh, as just an example here on how you could set this up. But by default, you'll have the me route and the teams route. We've seen the me route, and if we pass in teams, we will see that it gives us back an array of our teams in JSON. So we can get access to those. And you have two options here with your other resources. You can either do them at a top level, like projects, like so, and you would just need to scope your controllers to go through the current user teams and then your project. So you would set up the has many through on the user. The other option is to actually do nested resources here. So you could say projects in your teams and that would require you to pass in the team ID, then the project ID into the URL. It's entirely up to you on how you want to handle this. Um, and that will vary depending on your project as well. So I'm gonna leave that part up to you. So let's dive into the controllers. Those are defined in app controllers API v1. And we have a base controller here that takes care of the authentication for you. It will look up the API tokens and then make sure we record when they were last used if we found a matching one for the header. And then we can go through the controller and render uh, our JSON templates out. All of our controllers should inherit from the API base controller. That's going to make sure that we have the authentication set up there. You can skip the before action for that if you need to have an unauthorized API route, but generally you want that on by default and to only add exceptions rather than you know making it 
a opt-in thing for each controller. So then the same thing goes for our Teams controller. We're just using JBuilder here because everyone's familiar with that and it comes with Rails by default, but we've improved this quite a bit with the OJ gem, which will actually compile our JBuilder templates a lot faster than the default out of the box. So that is set up for us. It's optimizing our JSON serialization for us. So that is the basics of the API uh, functionality here. You can go and add your own controllers here, add your create, your delete, your update actions, whatever you might need in here, but you can go and take care of building all of that using the API base controller to have authentication set up for you out of the box. So APIs with Jumpstart Pro are extremely easy to use. You can see that by simply clicking a button, we have now a API token and we can access some of the routes that are built in. So this saves you a lot of time and you can get focused on building your API without having to worry too much about all those setup details.